What's up, guys? Ghost here. Sorry, it's been a little a bit of time that I haven't made a video. You gotta forgive me. I'm gonna have to put my shades on. The sun's right over top of me. Um, give you a couple updates now. Start talking about uh, the reason why I decided to make this video. Uh, been in school, like I've mentioned before, uh, pursuing a nursing career. Been doing a lot of, a lot, a lot of testing. A lot, a lot of homework, so that's why I haven't been able to put up a, um, more videos, so I apologize for that, but there's a couple coming, especially one on uh, first aid, probably, probably do that next, or if I can, later on today. Um, that's pretty much it, so, also today's my birthday, so, this is an interesting subject <laughs> to talk to, uh, talk about my birthday. Well, I've been getting a lot of comments on my no black why the no black purpose video I've been getting a lot of comments and feedback um, from quite a good good set of people uh, with a lot of good ideas to share uh, like-minded the one thing I have noticed with a lot of those individuals are that many live in inner cities or larger cities where they feel that they can't um, prepare and that there's a lot to it and then there's quite a few more that on the other spectrum there are many more out there but they're like ninjas as one said um, which is good because if your family's involved that's fine too but as far as widening, widening your options that's always a good thing too and joining any type of preparedness uh, group is always an option, but of course you want to do your research and see someone that might be able to point you in the right direction. But unfortunately, I don't have that information because just like some, my infrastructure is pretty much more so family, close friend um, related as of right now. Not that, that will change um, soon. But I realized I used to live in a city. Not that many years ago, I used to live in the city, and uh, as far as what I've learned, as far as prepping, there's some things that you can do and that you can't do. In some cities, in some areas, you may <laughs> let's use New York for an example. Long arms aren't permitted in certain areas. And in some small areas of the city, they are. Um, handgun permits are damn near impossible to get because they tie you up with so much damn red tape. Try to think about a way to protect your family. You have to use a legal means to make sure that your family's safe. Now, you know, I'm not talking about, you know, go out and buy a buy a gun from Joe down the block, but, because that could get you in way more trouble than you would even want to think or care about being into, and then your family will still be unprotected anyway, because you'll be in jail, but there are options, there are some things, um, and places that you can actually go to practice, especially if you have family that live outside the area, um, you could practice on their property, or in the area where uh, might be readily available to them or to you. There are crossbows that you can get. Doesn't mean that you, just because you live in a big city that you have to stay there every waking day of your life. You can travel outside and get things that might aid your survival. Um, you may be able to purchase a shotgun. You may be able to purchase a crossbow or even bow and arrow. Practice using that. What's the easiest way to, to not be noticed in the city? Be quiet. Bow and arrow across the two quietest places, two quietest ways to um, be able to be offensive and defensive without anyone hearing the sound, unlike firearm. As far as food, I know how it is with apartments. 
I had an apartment in the city. It was a studio apartment. And back in the day, I was paying about six fifty, six seventy five for a studio that would probably be no bigger than my living room as of right now, not including the bathroom uh, and part of the kitchen. But uh, what you can do as far as food storage, you don't have that much closet space in the city. I know, but you do have space under your bed, unless you have a water bed and you have no space underneath it. You can use containers to put those in. You can get those containers right from the dollar store. Those plastic small thin bins that fit right under, directly underneath your bed, about the same size as what a lot of women use to put their shoes in underneath the bed. Get a couple of those, line them up. Should be able to fit at least about a good anywhere between four to eight of them underneath your bed on both sides. Just don't have anything else under your bed. And then you'll be able to store food, emergency supplies, candles, anything. You can't tell me that they don't have drugstores in your area. You can get a first aid kit and build on it from there. Keep one in your car if you have a car. If you don't have a car, that might be even better for you because that way you don't have to worry about the congestion of everything in, in case everything goes to hell. Look at what happened with Sandy. How many cars are wa were washed away and how many cars got destroyed on top of property. But if you didn't have a car to worry about, that's one less financial aspect you have to think about in a time of crisis when you're trying to build yourself back up. After the crisis is over, you'd be able to afford to buy a vehicle. If you wanted to at all. A lot of times people take public transportation. You know what? Worst case scenario, you could make sure you have everything in your everyday carry and BP. Make it home. I know there's a lot of you that get frustrated because you're overwhelmed. And, and in the beginning, I was too. And it takes a lot of time and a lot of patience to, um, to actually start focusing on the whole aspect of prepping and, and being prepared. So I, I know there are more preppers out there. I'm not just talking about black. I'm talking about across the, the, the color spectrum, if you want to uh, call it that. And there's a lot of people out here that are preppers that don't even realize they are. I mean, think about it. How many times do you send the grandkids over to the grandma and she's always has cookies and candies and everything. What did she do? She made sure she went out, went to the store, purchased candy and treats and all the stuff that kids like because she was preparing for the grandkid, grandbabies to come over or for you to come back over. She made sure if, if, you, <laughs> if you're single and you're young and everybody goes to the stage, your parents prepare for when you come back or for, you know, you leave your apartment and you come over. You might be doing laundry at the house. Best believe they'll have some extra laundry detergent because they're prepared for your behind to come over there to use theirs anyway. Or extra food. They probably tell you don't go shopping in the house, but they always have extra because they know you're gonna do it. But that's a that's a that's a way of preparing opposed to rocking camo, having a <laughs> having a big beastie vehicle so you could go over dunes and and weaponry or you could shoot anything. I mean, come on, some things have to be realistic and you have to stay within your financial uh, and, and available means. So don't get discouraged, and this is for all properties, don't get discouraged because you feel like just because you're from the city that you can't do it. There are a lot of things that are expensive, but you don't have to go the expensive route. You can always do DIY things. You can always get the lower end stuff because even if something was to happen, you had that lower end item, like that lower end knife, you got a knife. Joe blow down the block, he don't have a knife. At least you have one up on him. It might not be the best, but just like with any other weapon or, or anything else, you take care of it, it'll take care of you. Even if it does break, figure out how to be able to lash a handle on something. No, you're not, so you can tie a handle onto that, onto that knife if it does snap off. Figure out a quick way of fashion a handle. You'll be good to go. Get a hatchet. They have those at Home Depot, Lowe's, everywhere. Get yourself a hatchet. Why? Just in case. You might have to chop wood. You might have to break through something. Get yourself a, um, I, I had one, I lost it, I have to buy another one. But for the faucet, it's a faucet four-way key. Well, you can go anywhere and you can take the faucet off, the handle, 
put that on there, or if it, there's no faucet rather, and you use that to turn on the water, or the water spigots, or stuff like that. There's real simple things that you can do and still prepare and still be able to do it even though you're in a big city. Now the thing that a lot of people touched on was that they keep it hidden. And that's a slippery slope. Because nowadays, anything you do is being constantly monitored and watched. Some people care about it, some people don't. But depending on what you're doing, if you're not doing anything illegal, then what do you have to worry about? Them? Big brother? Probably. You have enough food to take care of your family. That should be fine. Now, do I, do I say you need to get a, a rental warehouse <laughs> the size of half a block and make sure you have everything geared up like you're rationing for a platoon? No, but you also want to make sure that you're prepared because you never know, just financially, bad things could strike, jobs could close, jobs go down. You can get sick, you can get hurt. Having a good supply of food would at least get you by. And then you have to think about other plans. You need to plan things ahead anyway. As far as it goes, any, anyone could prepare no matter where you are. In the city, depending on how your apartment or building is, you can grow something small. You can grow little tomatoes. You can hang a tomato plant off your balcony. Or you might be able to hang it up inside the house. At least you have your own fresh tomatoes. They have plants that you can grow, have inside so you can have some type of sustainability on your own. And even doing that, you're actually, it might not come out perfect, but at least you'll be using that knowledge for the future when you are able to have more space. Then things might make a lot more sense to you it might become easier as far as planting and gardening and things like that. So, you can always do something. Even if you can't buy a rifle, you know, you know what? Try to see if you can find a, a, a BB rifle that's over, that goes over 100 feet per second. Regardless of who it hits, you can take down small game and you can damn sure hurt a person. That's an option. You're looking at anywhere between 100 to less than 200 bucks. It might not be a firearm, but I guarantee you, it'll freaking hurt. If you get shot with a BB in the eye, somebody's going to be blind. If you get shot by a BB anywhere, a BB travels the same way as a 22 bullet does. A 22 was, has been considered one of the most dangerous guns in the world. That's one of the guns that actually killed more people than a lot of others. Because that bullet is so small, it travels. Now imagine hitting someone and it travels through their bloodstream gets to their heart, clogs the artery, either way they're going to be hurt. Do your own research. BBs don't cost much. If you are able to get a firearm, get a reloader. The, the Lee reloaders, they're, I'm not going to say they're cheap. Financially, cost-wise, they're inexpensive to buy. I have mine. If, you, if you've seen my, uh, my the video with the case, my case ejector. I have one. I also have a, a press with shotgun. Why? Because I want to have that option. Some things are more inexpensive than you doing it on your own. And sometimes it's not. But at least when you learn the mechanics of it, you understand and you respect what you're doing more. You take pride in your work, so it's more of a value to you. We could always take time to prepare. Churches do it all the time. They have food drives. Why? To feed the homeless or feed a needy family. Why? Because they couldn't do it on their own. I thought the sun went away for a minute. But, uh, what we all need to do is look into networks and groups in our areas. Uh, see what works best for us as far as 
anything from a competitive standpoint because you never know. Something like that might, might save your life or you might save theirs. Everyone needs help. You can't be a lone wolf and think you're going to be Superman and Batman and not need anyone or anything. Because if that's the case, you should be living in the woods right now because if you didn't need anybody, you wouldn't have a computer system that you're using because of why? Someone had to build that computer for you. Someone had to supply that electricity for you. All that food that you get from the store, somebody had to supply that electricity for that store to be running for those delivery trucks to come. Everybody needs somebody, regardless of how much you think that you don't. And networking is, is a very powerful way. Now, I don't have any suggestions, but like I said, uh, recently my time has been... Whew, I've been going through it. I've been barely sleeping and trying to maintain a good average, so it's been hard on me, so I really haven't had a chance to do any type of uh, honest to goodness research but as far as it goes networking should be one of your biggest priorities because at least that way you can learn and hear about each other's mistakes and learn what not to do and that way certain things will come back and be easier for you so I understand that there are some preppers color but from what I've seen in, in the recent events of the world and the things that I've been witnessing in the news not to say that everything in the news is true I haven't seen personally like going to stores and stuff like that I haven't seen many people seeming like there's that much of a concern or to worry about anything possibly happening spoken to co-workers of all ethnic backgrounds and quite a few there's only a handful I could say have the same mindset as myself but quite a few people just living their lives vicariously through someone else or more so following Twitter and Facebook and could care less about the world events because it doesn't affect them directly So everyone can, can actually prepare. It just depends on what mindset you want to be in. Amazon has thousands and thousands of books, free books, gardening, bug out bag. They have anything. Survival, bushcraft. Even if you can't perform the skills, for example, if you like bushcraft and you watch shows like Survivor Man or Bear Grylls or whoever else, Naked and Afraid, and you wonder how they do that, Read up on the skill. Maybe even in your house, set aside a little area that you can practice some of it. Nothing too overly violent that's going to set the building on fire, but do what you can. Build your own items. Just try to figure it out. Things can always work out pretty well as far as getting yourself prepared. And hopefully your partner will, will get into it and get prepared too. It's no different than camping as far as bushcraft. It's a lot harder, but it's fun when you take something apart and you build something when you start that fire. Why don't we network? Pretty much because everyone's running scared. No one wants to tell what they have or what they got. And I, I can't fault them for that to a certain extent. It's kind of ridiculous when you say that you prepare for something and you never talk about food. We know you got food, maybe just not how much. So, I mean, I don't know. I know there was a concern, uh, at least for me, that a lot of individuals that I've subscribed to had ended up facing some robberies. Maybe it's because they were too famous, maybe because they were putting too many things out there, maybe because they gave away their location uh, over time. And it was too easy to it, it was it was just way too easy for these people not to not to go after them which is why number two you have to have some type of security system whether it be dogs alarm system someone always home everyone can prepare everyone just needs to decide to come together and get that taken care of but there's a lot to learn from everyone on YouTube, good and bad. 
some things that are dangerous, I wouldn't advise anyone to, to, to try on their own unless they're uh, absolutely sure that they know what they're doing. But there are many different things that you can do and different things that you can try. So I understand why we don't see a lot of people that call themselves prepared uh, preppers. But we do need to somehow or another come together and start some type of group or form or just bounce ideas back and forth. A lot of people can't afford to travel from one state to another. And I totally get that. But uh, the biggest thing that will help you to be better prepared for any type of catastrophe or emergency uh, is communication. Because just because you have family, you always want to make sure you have a backup plan because what if you can't get to them? What if they're out the area? What if they bugged out and, didn't, and you were supposed to go to their house and they thought it was too dangerous? Now you're stuck in a situation that they just shouldn't escape from. I don't know. That's just some thoughts I had in my head um, as far as preparedness, but I, I hope everyone is preparing. And uh, you guys have any ideas or anything that you want to see or any thoughts that you happen to have, feel free, comment, subscribe down there, like, share, and uh, I'm probably going to try to see if I can squeeze in a little first aid equipment uh, that I actually obtained about a week or so, so I think I'm going to try to get that done, so, but anyway guys, I hope you um, enjoyed my little rant, <laughs> I'm tired too, so you got to forgive me, so, alright guys, well, stay safe, I hope you enjoy uh, your weekend. I have to work. Um, have a nice one.